All right, everybody, we are back once again, Dr. Jeremy Pettis and Dr. Steve Edelman. And we're continuing on our Festivus tradition, again, Festivus for the rest of us, um, about you know maybe a way that you can handle the holidays with diabetes. And if you're watching the conference, we just started with the traditional airing of grievances, where we just kind of let it all out, vented uh, about things that piss us. I feel 10 pounds lighter, I don't I, know about I, you. I do too, man. <laughs> And then the second step of uh, Festivus, according to the Costanzas from Seinfeld, is the feats of strength. Now, in uh, the kind of diabetes world, what we're gonna make feats of strength are things that kind of help us fight back against these grievances. Again, we just list a lot of things that piss us off, but what are some new tools that we have um, to give us you know, a little bit more kind of muscle strength when it comes to fighting diabetes? I don't think there's ever been a time when we have so many new advances for people with type one and type two diabetes. Yeah. I mean, it really is crazy in a good way, like the slope of the curve with like oh. every month, like the stuff that comes out, that being a, a diabetes um, specialist is a lot of work to stay up on this, which is, which is good news. But it means for you guys watching, you have to advocate for yourself more than ever yeah. because there's a good chance your doctor might not have heard of these things. There's a good chance your doctor has no freaking clue. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. Yeah. So. We, break, we broke this up again against, uh, kind of, not against, but with type one and type two feats of strength, and there is a lot of overlap. Um, but we're gonna cover everybody and their different things. So first we're gonna start about with type one and some kind of new uh, medications, specifically starting with new insulins, or newer that maybe people haven't you know heard about. But to be fair, this is a totally type two category too. You're right. A lot of type twos need insulin. Type but two I, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, Years past, we had the type one track, the type two track, and the, there were so few medications and devices, and they were totally split up. But now, we're sharing drugs and devices, mm -hmm. and you should be happy about that. Don't share needles, though. Just sharing, <laughs> sharing drugs. Um, okay, so you're right. Anybody on insulin this applies to, and one of our grievances, whether you have type one or type two, is just the, the lay bile blood sugars. You go high, you do what we call a rage bolus, you go low, you eat everything in sight and you go kind of like, you bounce all day long. And that all starts with going high after a meal. And that kind of post-meal spike is such a problem and so annoying, even if you count your carbs like right. We always talk about striking the spike. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of things that we need to do, like take the fast acting insulin early, but it, it helps to have the best basal insulins and fast acting, and I think you're gonna talk about Yeah, that. so let's talk about fast acting. So uh, we've done a ton of lectures on these topics in our video vault. You really can't miss these if you just click on you know, type one new therapies or type two insulin. So first with kind of new injectable insulins, there's two. They're called, get ready for this, FIASP, F-I-A-S-P, and LUMJEV, L-Y-U-M-J-E-V. And these are both kind of um, newer developments on top of the older ones. So Humalog, God bless Humalog, we've had it forever. Um, added a couple things to it to make it Lumjev. So you can still get Humalog, but it's kind of like newest cousin is Lumjev. Um, and then Novalog, same thing, has you know now Fiasp. And bottom line, these work a little bit faster. They work a little faster, but they also get out of your system a little bit faster. Right. So not fast enough to, um, that you still need to take your insulin 10, 15, or min minutes more before you eat because they just don't act right away. Um, but in clinical trials, they can help you know, with those post-meal spikes by lowering your blood sugar, maybe 15 milligrams per deciliter after when using these. Or more, there's individual responses too. Some people love it, other people say it's a little bit helpful, they don't notice a huge difference. So you know what, it's always worth trying them if you're on fast acting. Yeah, so when a patient comes in to see me and they're on Humalog, I don't usually volunteer like, oh, you gotta be on Lumjev or whatever. But if they wanna try something, I'm, I'm all up for it. You can put these in pumps, you can do injections. So those are the injectable ones. And the other one is a Frezza, which you literally just can't miss in our video vault because we've done about 700 talks on this. Um, but it's one of my favorite topics because it's such a different insulin. It's inhaled insulin. Nothing comes close to how quickly it works, um, how quick it gets in your system, how quick it gets out of your system. You can use it for all your meals and corrections. You can use it in a combination like we do with hybrid closed loops. Um, it's a fantastic tool. Yeah, and this is this is one uh, product that your doctor may have no clue about. For sure. Or even push back because they don't know. Yeah. They'll say, oh, it's not good for your lungs, which of course it's proven to be safe. And also they, they don't know how to order it, so I don't think you need it kind of yeah. thing. We hear that all the time. 
But when people go on it, they absolutely love it. It's approved for type ones and type twos. Mm -hmm. And now they're doing studies in, in kids too, pediatrics. So lots of new options to kind of fight back against those annoying spikes with meals. Now when it comes to basal insulins, the long-term insulins, we've had Lantus for a long time. It's a great basal insulin. But frankly, we have two options now that are better. Whether you have type one or type two, I think all uh, patients on basal insulin should be on one of these new basal insulins. They're called Traceba and Tugeo. Tugeo. So we've done uh, <laughs> talks on these also. Why are they better than Lantus? They're more consistent across the day, um, which means you know less variability, less hypoglycemia. I think honestly for type ones, this is more important um, because it means your insulin's not wearing off. Um, you can just be more confident that you have it, you know, there all the time. Yeah, and it works really well for type twos. And you know, the other thing, it is a, a much longer than 24 hours. So for some of you that take Lantus twice a day or Levomir twice a day, two very good insulins, you take this once a day and you take it any time of the day. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, us type ones always take the Lantus at night, uh, and now you can take either Tracebo or Two Jo first thing in the morning. And they just did a big study comparing them and time and range is awesome. Uh, very little hypo. So it is something that allows you to live with diabetes much more easier, I should say. Yeah, and they call it traceba, that tre, you know, prefix meaning three, because they actually studied initially to be three days a week that you would take it. Kind is of that? just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, yeah. Um, so because it is so long acting. So they, they found that you could do that, especially the type twos but it just works better if you take it consistently every day. Well, what is the two and two jail? It just means like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It does work, the, the Traceba, you can give it that infrequently. However, it's much easier to remember. No, you absolutely should take day. these both like, you yeah. know, once a day. I'm just saying they, they were kind yeah. of playing around yeah. with this, yeah. which makes me think, we never actually talked about this, but like in active development now are two once weekly basal insulins, um, you know, so those might hit the market, what, you think in the next year or so? Yeah, year or two, sure. So like, you know, that's an interesting thing that we debate back and forth, how much people will use that, prefer once a week versus once a day, um, how will that affect titration, et cetera. But there's constant, these things are constantly being developed, which is kind of fun. You heard about that once decade insulin? Yeah, you just, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> no, I, I took it when I was 30, I'm good. Um, <laughs> all right, so, so that's type ones. And we're talking about, you know, we're gonna come back to some other type one medications, but just starting with insulin. For type twos, my God, like we could do an hour on each one of these categories yeah. of, of drugs. And we, we have, and our video about these are all over the place. So now, we are not pushing medications on folks, but the good thing about these medications for type two is that they, the benefits go way beyond just you know what the number you're seeing on your meter is. Yes, they improve blood sugar, but they help people reduce weight. I mean, who doesn't want to lose weight? They also help people's kidneys and heart stay uh, healthy. So these are fantastic medications that, get this, we're not just using for people with type two diabetes anymore, but anybody that has any, like sometimes issues with weight or heart or kidney issues. So we're learning that diabetes and kidney and heart, these are all really one thing. And these medications now can treat all of them. Yeah, let me say something about the SGLT2 inhibitors. Okay. You've seen the ads on television, Jardiance, Farziga. Those are the main ones. And you know, we always talk about the official FDA indication. Mm -hmm. So we talked about insulins, they're indicated for type one and type two. SGLT2s now, are indicated for people with and without type two. We are type ones, some of you are type ones, that is in the category without type two. And they have clearly been shown to reduce the progression of, you know, get medical here, diabetic kidney disease. And their effects on the heart are tremendous. They reduce a thing called congestive heart failure. And that's one of the most common conditions that people with type two diabetes and many with type one develop as they get older. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's so important because if you think about it, Jeremy, kidney disease has no symptoms in the early stages and neither does heart problems. And so that's why we spend a lot of time educating uh, doctors on what to order to pick up these problems early. But we can, we've talked about those on multiple mm -hmm. of our lectures. I did one with Dr. Santos recently what tests you should get 
to make sure that your doctor is staying on top of things. And every doctor, some of them are out to lunch, they all care, but some of them really need to have a little guidance. Yeah, so for me, if you have type two diabetes, I don't care what your A1C is, how long you've had type two, you should be on one of these SGLT2 medications, period. Um, they're fantastic. The next big category, so by the way, the SGLT2s are once a day oral pills, or a pill that you swallow. It's What's the main easy. side effect? Main side effect is... Um, There's not many. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you can get kind of, especially with women, can get yeast infections. They're probably the things that I, I, you know, talk about the most. But other than that, they're very well tolerated. Yeah, and very well tolerated. Yeah. So the next category is GLP-1s. And these are typically now once a week injections um, with these kind of easy to use pens. And the main extra benefit here is that these really help with weight. People can lose a significant amount of weight to the point that these are now approved for people with obesity, um, independent if they have type two diabetes or not. And some of these obesity drugs, one's called uh, Wegovy, for example, people can lose you know, 20% of their body weight or more. It's getting to be that these drugs are just as effective or almost as effective as complete you know, bariatric surgery. So people are just changing their lives with, learn, with losing, on average, it was what, 40 pounds or something? 40, 50 pounds. Well, that was Munjaro. Yeah, but Munjaro. we should say that, um, you know, these GLP-1 drugs, we have the most common weekly ones are Trulicity and Ozempic. You've heard that, oh, oh, Ozempic. That's, well, that's like one that's of them. That's not how it goes. Oh, 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 it's magic. Yeah. Okay, anyway. I think I did better. You guys can vote <laughs> in the comments. No, but... Th but no, that was one of the most effective like ad campaigns of all time. Oh, you know what? I love that song. It's by a band called The P Pilot. Okay. No one, that was their one hit song. Anyway, so re remember that Ozembic is indicated for people with type 2. And it is one of the most effective classes of medications for weight loss. And we mentioned this previously that... A lot of people are trying to get their hands on the stuff that don't even have diabetes at all. Mm -hmm. So the higher dose Ozembic um, is called Wegovy. It's the exact same drug. And in the once-day injection of a GLP-1, that's Victoza, the higher dose is called Saxenda. And then lastly, uh, Trulicity does not... Um, it has many different doses, but it started off at 0.75 and goes up to 4 milligrams a day. So they have much higher doses. The higher the dose, the more weight you lose. So what I'm saying is, for many people, you may not need to go to the big guns. You may be very effective at the low, they may be very effective at the lower doses. And there's lots of people yeah. online talking about these GLP-1 receptor acts. But they do something else that's probably just as important. They protect against the you know, heart, oh, again, sorry. and some like kidney protection also. So. Um, for me, again, if you have type 2 diabetes, you should be on one of these drugs, period. Yeah. Heart attacks and strokes is more specific. SGLT2s is heart failure. But it may turn out that they both affect both. So it's, it's impressive. Now, if you're sitting there with you know, type 1 like we are and saying, gosh, these type 2s get all these good drugs, I hear you. Um, because these drugs actually do work in type 1 diabetes, but they're not approved yet. There is some good news where companies now are actually... Um, actively exploring uh, indications for some of these GOP-1s, like Ozempic, to study them in type 1s to hopefully get them approved. I predict in the next you know, couple years that they will have an approved GOP-1 for type 1s. The SGLT2s, um, it's a little bit of a particular story for type 1s. They're not approved because they increase the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis. They still work and have some of these benefits, so we'll have to see. Um, companies are actively developing continuous ketone monitors uh, to go with continuous glucose monitors, which would be a huge breakthrough to kind of know what your glucose and your ketones are. I don't need to see my ketones all the time, but maybe if like it becomes a problem, you can get a little alert to, to indicate that you might be going into DKA. Hey, you haven't checked your ketones in a decade. Yeah, I know. I, I did it when I did my decade basal insulin. That's <laughs> when I remind myself to check my ketones. Um, and then, so we, we've talked about these kind of at length, but please go to our video vault because um, getting on the right regimen of, if you have type two is so important especially when you have these fantastic medications. I get really excited, but also kind of pissed off when I see somebody come in um, on these really antiquated medications. I'm mad for them that they're not on like the right medications, but I'm excited that I get to use some of these newer medicines that are so fantastic. But we, should we mention something about Monjaro? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, Monjaro is the latest, um, and everyone's calling it the biggest blockbuster 
in type 2 diabetes. And what it does is it does uh, two things. It, it works very similar to the GLP-1s, but uh, there's another hormone where it increases its activity, GIP. And I'll, I'll keep you guessing what that stands for. But what they saw was when they compared it to some of the GLP-1s like Ozembic, that, that they lost more weight and their A1C dropped. In fact, people who took Monjaro went from diabetes to pre-diabetes. Yeah. And we've never seen people improve this great. And this is the study where they took people that weighed about 250 pounds and on the average person lost about 50 pounds. We also have a dose of Dr. E and P on that on our website as well. So and Steve so dresses up in a very Italian looking get up and what do you say? Mungiaro. Yeah. <laughs> well, you say it better than I do. No, that's good. So, um, you know, and they're all, they're not studying Mungiaro specifically in type 1 diabetes, but other drugs with this kind of approach in type 1. So, do not feel completely left out if you have type 1, that we do benefit from all this research going into type 2s and, and using some of these medications. Yeah, and, and one thing I'll say before we go to the next topic is the American Diabetes Association, which puts out all the guidelines for which drugs to use in which order, general guidelines, they say that if your patient has uh, heart problems or kidney problems, even if the A1C is perfect, you go straight to these drugs. And you can use them both together, in fact. Yeah. So a lot of people are on SGLT2s and GLP1s, and that's that's a one-two punch that's amazing. Right. Nothing wrong with metformin, which is the first line therapy normally, but a lot of folks are on those as well. And then so, maybe eventually combining these once weekly basal insulins with once weekly GLP1s, and like, you know, it keeps evolving. So, all right, type ones, we're coming back to you. You know, some of the biggest advances and arguably the biggest advances in type 1 diabetes have been in the technology field. Um, continuous glucose monitors, I think we take a little bit for granted, but go back 10 years even, not many people were on them. And now we have, you know, the Dexcom, the Libre, and Eversense, which is an implantable option. Keep getting smaller, more accurate. The G7 approved in Europe and should be very soon here. I love that it has the transmitter um, and, the, and the sensor all together. Uh, so in one application, you don't have to, you know, futz around with finding both of them. Um, the Libre 3 now is an option for type 1s um, because you don't have to scan it anymore. It actually goes directly to your, your, your phone or e system. Easier applicator, really tiny. Yeah. But the other thing, Jeremy, you know, you, you, I keep after correcting you because you, this CGM, you know, is not a type 1 thing. No, I know, but I'm just saying it's the biggest advance for type 1s. And type twos can use them. Steve's always on me about. You well, know, you know what? I'm, uh, I was just felt the type ones were feeling left out with the drug stuff. So. I don't think they should feel left out. Okay. But no, but you know we're kidding. But the the CGM uh, in type two world is expanding for sure quickly because uh, insurance companies are realizing that they're not just going to limit it to type twos that are taking three injections of insulin a day. Because we realize that even people with pre diabetes. Um, if they can see what the result of what they eat, how much they eat, effects of exercise, it's a, one of the most powerful behavior modification tools. And you know how it is when you give a type 2 a CGM. They, if they get engaged with it, they yeah. love it. So it's, it's, you know, CGMs are approved for anybody taking mealtime insulin, period, now. But like you said, that's getting bigger and bigger. And, but, the, um, and the devices are becoming less expensive yeah. and easier access. For sure. So also for, this is more for type 1s, but type 2s can use, is these hybrid closed loop systems, which means, you know, automating insulin delivery slightly based on your continuous glucose monitor. And we now have the Omnipod 5 system, fantastic tubeless option. People, me, can, people, people can actually um, do looping, which is, an, you know, a non-FDA approved version of that, which we use. Um, tandem Control IQ, fantastic pump, and Medtronic as well. So... Basically, if you're on a pump at this point, you're on one of these systems. Um, they do a lot, improve people's time and range by generally 10% or so, less hypos. You sleep better at night. Waking up with a good blood sugar is amazing. You, um, actually it was Earl Hirsch and you that did this, this talk. Check it out, Hybrid Closed Loop Systems, yep. revolutionizing type one on our, on our website to learn all about these different you know, devices and, and picking one. And if you're doing completely fine on shots, more power to you, but these systems, excuse me, you're going to keep getting better and better and better. And at some point, you know, it's going to be absolutely, you know, worth it to, to make the shift. You know, I don't like wearing a pump, but it does something you just can't do with shots, period. Well, there's a fun lecture I did where I debated Earl Hirsch 
you know, multiple daily injections versus insulin pump therapy. But what I was going to say is, you know, if you're on an insulin pump and a CGM, but it's not one of these communicating systems, hybrid closed loop, we call it, and we call that the dumb pump because the pump is, is working off of what you're telling it to do. Mm -hmm. And we screw up all the time, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be on a system that communicates with a CGM yeah. and it's working for you 24 seven. And what's the most, what's the thing people say with these systems overnight? Yeah, they just they sleep better. You wake up with a good blood sugar, less yeah. alarms, less you know all that. Why? Because we're not eating and we're not screwing up our own blood sugars, <laughs> counting carbs and putting in incorrect boluses. It's it's been amazing. In fact, it's changed our clinical practice because mm -hmm. someone comes in for a thirty minute visit, you're done in five minutes, and then we just talk about their favorite Peloton instructor <laughs> because their A one C is good. They're not having hypos. It's truly amazing, and I would say the minority of type ones out there are taking advantage of hybrid closed loop. And hopefully that's gonna grow quickly. Yeah. So, you know, back to the type twos, this was my next slide that, you know, we already talked about. Oh, CGM. it's nice you're going back yeah, to the Yeah, you know, twos. I had it in an order and you messed me up. Um, so uh, <laughs> for type twos, you can get on continuous glucose monitors. We, we talked about that. Dr. Schaefer Bader, B-O-E-D-E-R, did a really good talk on this CGM for type twos in the video vault. We go into all the details of that. Um, back to the type ones. So, and some of the type twos, but I want to make you. sure that um, <laughs> this is actually type one specific, that potentially by the time this, this first airs, December 10th, we will have our first, get this, approved drug to delay the onset of type one diabetes. It's called teplizumab. The decision is supposed to be made by the FDA November 9th, 7th, 7th? 17th. Yeah. 17th. Um, so very, very soon. And all signs are pointing towards this likely being approved. Very quickly, we've done a lot of talks on this, one called uh, Type 1 Diabetes Research Breakthroughs. We did a podcast on the science of type 1. It is a medication that's given through an IV. You give it once a day for 14 days for people that are at high risk of developing type 1, and we talk a lot about how you define that. And in the clinical trials, people that got this therapy, on average, delayed the onset of type 1 by three years. So not a cure. But certainly, you know, delaying it by three years is a first step to adding on other therapies to it. Um, we've never had a drug that's altered the course of type 1 until potentially this month. Yeah, we've cured a lot of diabetic animal models. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is a huge deal, actually. Yeah. And, you know, some of the, that's the mean delay was three years. Some people got it earlier, but some people haven't even gotten it after seven years. And so, it, you know, when you think about what are the benefits of delaying type 1, you ask any parent of kids with type one, any person with type one, with all these advances we're talking about, in three years, we might have a totally closed loop artificial pancreas where you just stick it on and you don't have to do anything at all. Yeah. So it's, it's a tremendous advance and it's gonna have a, a marketing name. Tablizumab is a anti-CD3 monoclonal antibody. That's for some of you scientists out there. say that. <laughs> yeah, no, this, this is absolutely um, a, a big breakthrough and we're really excited about that. So um, other things on here, we have glucagon. Yeah, Because that's... Um, this is for type 1s and type 2s, anybody that's, you know, certainly anybody that's on insulin. We've had an old form of glucagon for a long time that you have to mix. It expires after six months. We have two options now. Uh, the first is called Gvoke. It's, a, it's mixed in a, in a pen all together. You don't see the needle. You just you know, push it down on your skin and it auto-injects it. It's stable at room temperature for two years, which actually is very, very important. It means that you're not constantly just you know, throwing away glucagon if you haven't used it. So that's one. The other is Baxemi, also stable for two years, but it's an intranasal form of glucagon. So there's no uh, needles at all. Both of these are, are really helpful because often it's people that don't have diabetes or aren't medically trained that are administering it. So trying to make it as easy as possible know where you have it, tell your friends, family, where you keep your glucagon so uh, they can help you out. But when you go to your doctor, ask for a new prescription of glucagon because these have actually been out for a little while now, meaning that they, they're getting covered and easier to get, et cetera. You know what? Uh, you, you hope that you, your prescription expires. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the sooner you can treat a serious low, the better. And what this le is the neck leads to is mini dose glucagon. Yeah. So instead of eating everything in the fridge, you're going to dial in a little dose of glucagon with trial and error. They'll, they'll come up with some dosing regimen and you give yourself a quick shot and you, you reverse quickly. You get rid of those symptoms quickly. And that's going to help people just, uh, 
you know, avoid weight gain, and more importantly, getting them from the serious low range yeah. to the higher range. So it, mini dose glucagon is what a lot of folks are waiting for. We, we just went through great pains making a, an access page. Okay. We got links to every company making every drug and device we spoke about that help people uh, get these things if they don't think they have insurance coverage or they don't have insurance coverage. Everything from patient assistance to so many different plans that are hardly ever taken advantage of. And it's an, it's a, it took six months to get this together. It's on our website right now. Okay. Sorry. So they can just go to the website, click access page? Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's very important. So we're just kind of concluding this, you know, feats of strength by the other major feat of strength we have is using type 1 diabetes to stay positive, to live a long and healthy life. And we talked about, um, you know, using diabetes period. I don't know if I said type 1 again. <laughs> um, but that it's um, made us more health conscious. We exercise probably more than we did. We're on top of our blood pressure, our cholesterol. We know now that people with diabetes, if you control it, live just as long, if not longer than people without it. So that's a positive. It's given both of us a career. You know, and a lot of folks out there, you might not be endocrinologist, but you use diabetes in some way. You're, you know, a, th a therapist, you're a, a blogger, whatever, but diabetes might have shaped your career in a way. And we have the We Are One diabetes website mm -hmm. of healthcare professionals who are living with diabetes. You know, I was gonna be a rocket scientist. Instead, I said, I'm going into diabetes. Well, we would have been you know, on Jupiter by now if you went into rocket science. But you know what? I, I have to say this famous quote that uh, Dr. Polonsky always shows uh, by William Osler. The way to live a long and healthy life is to get a chronic disease and take care of it. That summarizes what you were just saying. And we did an awesome video, I have to say, it's one of my favorites of of reenacting some positive scenes in our life about when we've used diabetes to our advantage. So check that out on the website. So thanks for listening to our Feats of Strength. I feel better now about airing our grievances and now all this cool stuff that we have um, and approaches to diabetes are so helpful. But, you know, Steve, in the Costanza family tradition, the Feats of Strength um, is actually about, you know, challenging somebody to a physical duel. So in the tradition of the Costanza Festus, I, I think we should fight. Okay, I, I'm gonna, can I use the pole? No, you can't use the pole, but okay. we should get ready for our fight and meet, meet back here. Okay. Okay, bye. Hey, I'm gonna surprise you hey. showed. Absolutely, you know I wrestled in high school. What? You didn't tell me that. You didn't ask. Okay. All right, you sure you wanna do this? Are you sure you wanna do this? I guess. All right, ready? On the count of three. Okay. One, two. <coughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm getting low. I thought you were slow. Gosh, sorry. Let me get you some. Yeah, yeah, juice. yeah. Okay. Hey. Ah! <clears throat> Kidding. Woohoo!